This Mass will be offered for our parishioner, Romain Drouet. We celebrate the feast day of the Holy Trinity. The Spirit of the Lord has filled the whole world, and that which contains all things understands what is said. Alleluia. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. The Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. The word of the Lord. Yes. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers. And blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. 
Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne on the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. We might think, well, 
it would be the Eucharist, Jesus in the Holy Communion, or maybe it's the Incarnation, Son of God coming to earth. Just what I heard our Gospel is talking about, Jesus with Nicodemus, God the Father sent his Son. Know the most essential and most important altars is this teaching about God within himself. We don't find the word in scripture, and we know we will never understand this great mystery, no matter how smart we be. One of the smartest men in the early church was Augustine. He had lived a wild life. He had a mistress and a child out of wedlock. He ran away from his mother's gaze to go and teach in Italy, and he was from Northern Africa. But he became a great Christian, as we know. And while he was out walking along the beach, maybe that was like Willingdon Beach or the Sea Walk in Powell River here, he was attempting in his mind how he would come up with an intelligent way to explain the Trinity. How could he do it? So he encountered this small boy sitting on the sand. He wasn't making the sand castle. He was pouring seawater from a shell into a small hole that he made in the sand. So he asked the boy, well, what are you trying to do there, son? The boy responded, I'm emptying the sea into this hole. But that's impossible, answered Augustine. So the boy was nonplussed. He was unabashed. He looked back at Augustine and he calmly replied, But what you are trying to do to comprehend the mystery of God with your small brain is even more impossible. All of a sudden the boy vanished and Augustine concluded that it was an angel that had been sent to him to instruct him about the mystery of God. In later life he would write, you see the Trinity if you love him. Augustine said that the Father is the lover, the Son is the loved one, the Holy Spirit the personification of the very act of loving. As we know, we have different hints about the Trinity and they are in the Old Testament and of course we have the explicit teaching of the Trinity in the New Testament with Jesus. That's his, his greatest revelation is the Father and the Spirit. And we see one of these hints today, it's a moment that we would say is the low point in the history of Israel. They have given into idolatry. Moses went up the mountain, they got tired, fed up, as somebody said recently with a favorite phrase of mine, they had the body. They were fed up waiting. So they made an idol, they fell into idolatry, the golden calf. Moses was very angry, he crashed the two stone tablets. So now Moses has to go back up the mountain, carve out another two stone tablets, begin again. But we see some hints of the Trinity. One of them, of course, is the mention of the cloud. The Lord descends in a cloud. For the Christian writers, this is always a description of the Holy Spirit, a symbol of the Holy Spirit's presence. Whenever we see the cloud, we are inclined then to think of the Holy Spirit, especially when we think of the Transfiguration. Even we can think of Jesus ascending into the clouds at the Ascension, the Holy Spirit's involvement. We call these moments of theophanies, God all of a sudden reveals himself to human beings, such as he does to Moses. And then secondly, we read the Lord stood there with him. The Lord stood with him there. Well, the only one of the three persons that could have stood with Moses, that would have the physical capacity, of course, would be Jesus. Now this is very mysterious, it's happening before the Incarnation. But it is a hint that the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, and 
the Holy Spirit, the third person, are capable of interacting along with the Father in these different moments of salvation history. Various times God reveals himself in a human form, such as we have that famous moment where Abraham is visited by the three visitors and they promise to him that it will be a son that will be born to him from Sarah. So Moses then hears in this moment the description of God's inner life that we are in fact celebrating today, a God of tender love and mercy, what we call with the beautiful word in the Old Testament, the Hesed, God's covenant love, covenant faithfulness. It means God will never abandon that love or covenant faithfulness, no matter how often how far his people stray from him. In our Gospel today, Jesus reveals that this same covenant love is at work now in the New Covenant. The Father sends a Son out of deep love for humanity. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. So we're thinking about God within himself, that he is supremely happy with himself and created us only to reflect his happiness. So we're moved then to ask, how much does my life reflect the love of the Trinity? Do I respect the members of my family? Do they respect me? Just like the Holy Trinity, they respect one another and they have their different roles. It is a union based on mutual trust and respect, of course, a sharing of the one being. Do we see the Trinity of them as a model of what our community should be like? We might end by reading again the wonderful words in the second letter to the Corinthians that describe the community life based on a, the Trinity. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. For our parish community, that our unity in the faith and as children of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
will never diminish. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who live without faith, that the love of the Blessed Trinity will awaken their minds and give hope to their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who struggle with depression, addiction, loneliness, or mental health, that they will experience the consolation of knowing they are loved by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the recently deceased, Merv Cosman and Stephen Dow, both of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the needs of Assumption School at this time of year, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, let us remain completely vigilant in our faith and wholly given over to your creative action. Through Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual work. Great brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty God. Amen. Broke the bread 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the soccer was ended, he took the chalice and gave him thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it, for, now, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you. For many forgiveness of sins, do this in memory. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 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 Lord. Christ.
Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the Spirit of His Son, the Spirit that cries out of the of God. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament of the Lord our God bring us help of body and soul, as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Blessed Trinity.